hey and welcome to another video in today's video we're going to be setting up the time conversion macro as well as setting up the update lab custom event as well as adding the lab timers so that we can start keeping track of the the time for each lap so with that said let's get into this so before we get started on today's video i first wanna correct something i did in the last video while i was playtesting i kind of noticed that the checkpoint system doesn't work if you try and set it up as a circuit for a circuit race and the reason for that is because under the bp tracker in the race complete function here where we set up the check whether the race is complete or not i actually had the two swapped the max labs and actual lap i had them reversed the max lap should actually go at the bottom and the actual lap should go at the top and if you do that switch then the system should work for circuit racing and that will pretty much be it if and then something else i also did was in the vehicle player controller in here by the value variables i also changed the actual lap and max lap both to one and then i compiled and saved and along with the change of the other change as well the system started working fine so with that said we're going to get started on today's video today we're going to start with the time conversion macro so if you just come over here by the blueprints double click on the time conversion blueprint we created and then just drag it over to the top and then once that is open head over here by the add and then macro and then we're going to rename this to time to text and then just move this out the way a bit some space and then if you click on the input we're gonna need an input just add that we're gonna call this one rename it and call it time and then convert it to a float and then by the output we're gonna also add an output we're gonna call this text and convert this into a text setup and with that done we now want to get started so first off from the time by the inputs drag off and then we're going to search for the divide function and then we're going to change this and say divide by 60 because we're first doing the minutes then the seconds and then the milliseconds so with that we're going to drag off from the pen and look for the flow function just the normal flow not flow to integer 64 just the normal flow and then from there and then from there from the floor drag off and look for a greater than symbol and then change this to nine and then from the return value drag off and look for a select node all the way at the bottom press select and then from the false drag off and then you're going to look for an append the append function and append a we're going to put zero under normal circumstances it will be like zero one zero two zero three and then once it gets to ten it will be ten and then so forth and so forth this is just to add that uh, the zero in front of any digits um, smaller than nine and then we're going to take the return value here and then we're going to connect it to b and then that equal to that and then we're going to take from the true and then connect that to the return value by the floor and then we'll convert that as well and with that we are done with the minutes just move this out the way a bit and also add a comment around it say minutes and then for the seconds we're just gonna copy everything as is control c control v and then the divide function we're gonna delete this and from the time by the inputs drag off and look for a percentage instead 
in percentage float and then connect that and then turn this to 60 and then that will be it for the for the seconds seconds are done just drag over everything a comment and then say seconds and then now we're gonna do the milliseconds so just copy everything from the floor function by the seconds control c and control v and then from the time you're gonna drag off and then look for a floor function again and then from there we're gonna drag off from the time once more and then add a subtract function and we will be subtracting the floor from the time and then we're going to multiply this by a thousand Let's change this to a thousand and then we're going to add this to the floor if we, and then that should be that as well that is all that we need to do the milliseconds Let's move this out, make it look nice. And then just add a comment around this, say milliseconds. Just move that. And then I wanna move this out the way. And then with this done, we're now gonna build the actual weight that it will be displayed. The way I will be building it is to look like a stopwatch. So it will be a, it will be minutes, double colon, seconds, dot milliseconds. So to do that, we are going to take the append at the top by the minutes. We're gonna take that and just copy it. And then we're gonna connect the return value from the select to A, and then at B, we're gonna add the colon, and then we're gonna copy the append again, and then just make a copy there, and then we're going to return the return value from the seconds to B, and then the return value from A, we're gonna put that at A, and then just have another append and then return, put the return value at A and then we're gonna put B as a full stop. I'm gonna have another append and then we're just gonna take the return value from the milliseconds connected to B and then the return value at the top connected to A and then all of that will then be connected to the output. And that, that is complete. And now we can just add a comment around all of this. Actually, I'm just gonna move this out the way first. It doesn't have to look like this. Uh, I just do this for my own sake. So I can see how things move. You can make it look a little bit different from this. And then we're gonna take these ones and then the comment around them, add a comment. We're gonna call this one uh, build string display and then we're gonna take these two it's final two and then just say comment convert to string and with that we have we are now done with the macro and then you can just save this and that will be it. That, that's everything we needed to do here. And then we close this. And then we're gonna head over to the Yoko player control because we're gonna be working in here. First thing I'm gonna do is the update lab custom event. So from here, we are gonna drag in the race complete. Hold control and drag it in. And then we're gonna add a branch node and then connect these up. And then we're also gonna drag in the actual app, hold alt and drag in the actual app. And then we're gonna connect this to the false of the branch node. 
and then we're gonna hold control and then drag in actual lap again and then from the pin we're gonna drag off and add an additional node and then connect that to the set actual lap and then by the additional we're gonna put a one so that if the race is not complete we're gonna add one to the set actual lap and then from there we are then gonna drag in from the text variables the lap text so hold alt and drag this in and then set this up oh, just move these out of the way and then we're gonna connect these two up and to automatically add a two string for us and then from the true from the true we are going to connect the the lap time check function and then we're just going to connect that like so and with that it is then complete we're just going to drag a comment over this and say update laps with that done we're now going to work on the, the lap timers over on the side here so first thing to do is to right click and then add a timeline and then we're going to rename this to race time and then from here we're going to double click to open it and then we're going to add a new track a add track float and then we're going to add a couple points just shift and left click we're going to add two of them the first one we're going to set it at time zero value zero and then the second one we're going to set it to we're going to set it to time triple nine and then value triple nine and then we're just gonna bring it back by clicking these two just realign it inside so the time goes in that direction and then from there we're gonna click on this button here that says use last keyframe and with that we're done and then just compile and save and then add back to the event graph and then from the event graph we're gonna drag in the race time just hold alt and then drag in race time and then we connect the new track zero to the race time let's just kill that and then we're going to go back into the race time over here and then we're going to rename this race time not the race time race time on the other no it's just let's just call it time i'll just call it time because we're going to use it for both the lap and race time and then compile and save and then we're gonna head back to the event graph and then we're just gonna connect the time to the race time and then the update execution pin to the set and then we're gonna connect the start race time custom event to the play and then the stop to the stop and then from there we're gonna take the race time timeline control c control v and then we're going to rename this one to lap time and then we're going to connect the start lap time to the play from start and then start to stop the reason for this is that we want this one not to calculate the time of the entire race but the time of each lap individually so every time you go around for new lap it will restart again from zero and then go from there and then we have the lap time value variable over here so we're gonna drag this one in as well and connect this up the same way we did with the race time variable we need to then go down to the text variables which is here by the race time text we need to then drag the race time text in Hold Alt and drag in as well as the lap time text. Drag these two in. And then between these, we're gonna add the 
time conversion macro we just finished just right click and then add the time to text macro we just created and then it's going to ask you for the input and the output and then just connect this to there and then connect that to the race time text and then connect it to execution pins and then you can just control c and control v the macro and then connect it up like so and then now it will take the float values that are split out from the timeline set the lap time and then convert it from a float to a string as we did as we specified in the macro and then from the race time we're going to add the update goals function because we need to update our goals at the end of the race to see if the player has beaten the times or not and with that we're done we are finished we can compile and save and then if you wish to test out whether this works or not we can then drag off from the update goals and then add a print text and then just connect this to the text and then here by the event begin play at the end we're just going to add the drag off from the execution pin and then add the start race time custom event and with that if you can just save all so in case it crashes and then if you add play and then as you can see on the left hand side it's keeping track of the time for so with that said that is the end of today's video if you liked it if you didn't like it feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and until the next video